Hello everyone, what's up? Prince Twelve Fifteen here with another video review. Today I'm reviewing Transformers The Last Night Premier Edition Deluxe Class Decepticon Berserker. And boy is that always a mouthful. So, here's the toy, but really quick, let's take a look at the box. So, here's the box. It's a nice box, makes it seem like a mini Voyager. Uh, here on front, you've got the very ugly looking Decepticon Berserker. It says that right there, that's his name. It's from Transformers The Last Night. It's ages 8 plus. Of course, that's just suggestion. They have to put that on there. This is made by Hasbro. Uh, it says Transformers along the side, Premier Edition. Nice Decepticon I, symbol on the back. I really like all the stuff inside the box. So on the side, you kind of got a continuation of Berserker here and the Decepticon symbol split in half, which makes it look a little silly. Uh, it's a deluxe class in several different languages. It says Transformers along the side. There's the Decepticon symbol on the back. You get a short bio saying he's a raging destroyer in several different languages. Another shot of Berserker there. Another look at the Decepticon logo. And then on the back here you have Berserker. He transforms in 17 steps. And you can also look for our Bumblebee and Barricade in different languages. Also, don't eat the toy. That's not a good idea. So that's it for the box. And here is Berserker. So, uh, Berserker, obviously in this form, is a, is very much just another version of Crankcase from Transformers Dark of the Moon. And uh, Berserker doesn't actually get all that much screen time in the film. He's in the movie for about five seconds. He says, I'll suck out your brains. There's a, there's a snapshot with his face and his name, and then he disappears. We get more time with Dreadbot, actually, which I kind of wish we had gotten that version of this kind of because I mean they both use the same face and they're basically the same robot mode except for the fact that Dreadbot transforms into a VW van. I would have much preferred to have a toy that instead of another one of these but for what we get here this is really nice. I do really like this toy. Uh, it's another Chevy Suburban. He rolls pretty well. I mean, it's kind of a... One of the wheels is kind of sticking here. It's kind of this one. That's kind of sticking a little, but it does roll pretty well. And it looks like a nice police outfitted Suburban all in black. You got your Decepticon symbol on either side here. Top down view. And overall, the molding on here is really, really nice. And everything compacts pretty nicely under the robot here you can kind of see the face sticking out there but everything compacts pretty nicely so yeah let's do some size comparisons here so here's crankcase from dark of the moon the he's a little taller than crankcase i was about to say they're about the same size from when i measured them a minute ago but actually crankcase from dark of the moon is a little taller so they look really good together, though, I will say that. So, I mean, this is a good way to get your two-thirds of the dreads from Dark of the Moon. Here they are standing up. You can kind of get a sense of how they look like there. And then here is Berserker's wave mate, uh, the Dark of the Moon Barricade. Not Dark of the Moon Barricade. Uh, the Last Night Barricade. So, here they are together. And... Barricade is much longer than Berserker, which is not how the actual vehicles would be in real life, but oh well. So that's it for the size comparison. Uh, there is weapon storage. He does come with these little weapons here, which are these little melee things that the Dreads used in Dark of the Moon. And how you attach them is that here on the legs, there are these little tabs here, and they just go in like I've got this upside down, I think. They just go in like so, maybe. There we go, uh-huh. Now it's fitting in. All right, then you just take this one and put it right in. That one just fell out. But you get the idea. That's how they fit in. And as far as weapon storage go, that's pretty good weapon storage. I really like how that fits in. So kind of visible under there, but not terrible. So, yeah. So that's that. Let's get down to transformation. And his transformation into robot mode is much easier than his vehicle mode. Um, the problem with his vehicle mode, the only thing is that transforming it into vehicle mode, it's just kind of hard 
to get things snapped into place. And that is the only reason, I, and that's the reason I'm starting with vehicle mode instead of robot mode, is that the only difficulty of transforming him is just hard to get everything snapped into place correctly. Uh, everything will fit, but it just kind of, the, the, the one problem with this toy is that it does kind of have a bad habit of everything kind of popping out of place. When I was putting those weapons in there, you can kind of hear popping and stuff. So to start the transformation, basically, you just separate these two panels back here, and then this can rise up. Now, this is another problem, is that this piece does pop off very easily, but it's just as easy to pop back on. So you just, there, and you gotta see, because you gotta be careful with that, because it's not supposed to go up like that. So once we have that separated, then we just kind of, we can take this panel here and fold it down. We can do that on either side. And then we can have the legs pulled down like so. Then with that done, we can pull apart the hood here and push up that. And now we have that revealed and we can push that up and now we've got the torso made. So then with that, then we can start pulling this whole assembly down and then we start to backpack it. And that goes in there, that folds up in there, and that folds up on the back. And then this can also fold up like that. So it is very nice and compact. I really like that. So then the arms are pretty simple. They just fold out like so. Then you've got these here that will tab onto that bit there, but it doesn't hold extremely well. So, so we've got the little horns here that you do kind of have to mess with a bit to get the way you want. There we go. Now I can maybe, there we go. It is a bit hard to do this with one arm sometimes. Whew, okay, that arm's getting a workout. So now we pull this one down, do the same thing, flip the hand up, fold that in, and then turn the legs. And then Berserker does have the kind of Starscream chicken leg syndrome, where the legs go back like this, and then he has his little heels right here that you just flip out and then there push that in a little bit more there we go and then there we have berserker and so then here we have berserker in his robot mode like with many transforms it's much easier to get him into his robot mode than it is his vehicle mode so let's give him his little spike weapons here And there we are. So, yeah, he looks really, really cool. Just kind of line up. Yeah. I mean, that looks pretty cool to me. So, let's get in close here on the face. A little light. The head sculpt is fantastic, I must say. Like with Barricade, I really like how they managed to get the little eyes picked out in red paint. I figured that would have been something a little hard for them to do, but they managed to do it. So, I mean, overall the paint on him is really nice. So I really like that head sculpt. So now up here, and then let's get some size comparisons going. So then here is Crankcase from Dark of the Moon. And I must say, I really much prefer Berserker because Berserker stands up much better than Crankcase ever did, or does. So, here's what they look like together. And they, they do look really nice together in robot mode and vehicle mode. So it's really cool to see the two, two of the dreads together. So... Berserker looks like he's a hair taller by the head. Of course, Crankcase has the great big horns on the back, so that gives him more of a size advantage. But at the head, Berserker's slightly larger. 
And then uh, I won't I won't display it here because I already tried, but uh, Crankcase's gun here does not fit in Berserker's hands, unfortunately. The See, he just falls over. He just flops over. I mean, what are these feet? I mean, the transformation on the feet is cool, but I, they just... They just don't stand. They just—he just does not stand properly. Ugh. Come on. There. You gotta always have to play with that to get him to stand. And then here is Barricade. So Berserker is much taller than Barricade, but Barricade's always kind of in the short squat type of bot. So yeah, they all look cool together. Uh, I think. As I was saying, my favorite of the two is certainly Berserker. He, while it is very annoying to get his uh, robot in the vehicle because those panels just don't want to, just don't want to stay clipped together. Uh, it, it's I think the transformation and the and everything about him just works better than Crankcase does. And actually, and besides the fact, if the panels did not want to always snap out of place. And that may only be a my figure problem. It may be perfectly fine on the others. Uh, if the panels didn't want to keep popping out of place, I think he would be a far superior toy, uh, tor the toy to crankcase. Just be, you know, I think everything works a lot better. The design looks better. It's not as clunky. I mean, this is almost kind of like the first edition vehicle on from Transformers Prime to the uh, Robots in Disguise Transformers Prime uh, Vehicon. The, no, I mean, you know what I mean. I'll have the pictures up on screen. I mean, the, the Vehicon that kind of came out in more of a wide release was much better than the first edition. They really got the time they needed to work that out and work out all the kinks and that, and I think it was a much better toy because of it. Berserker here is kind of the same way. They've had time to look at the concept of the that was presented for the film and kind of make a better version of that. So I think everything works out a lot better. The only the one complaint I have about the robot mode is that you do have these panels back here on the legs, and that's not really quite accurate to the film. But oh well, uh, I don't. Mind the the big old car folded up on his back here. That's I mean, it, it folds up. I mean it's not it's not the biggest backpack out there. I mean let's actually even compare. And crankcase does an, uh, does a pretty good job of folding up his backpack as well, but at the cost of like there's a door on his arm. So and there's a bit of and there's a bit of car right there. But I'm going to get into that right now. See the thing is is that. And I don't, again, this may have just been mine out of the box, but when I first opened it out of the box, these pieces here were very, very loose. So, and there's not anything, see, it just kind of falls out there. So there's just those in there. So it is possible if you want to do a little bit of parts forming, you can take off these door pieces and this one stays in much easier. But you can take off those door pieces and display him without these to make his arms look a little more streamlined and actually that that gives him a really interesting look right there just because the arms don't have that massive bit of kibble on there and that looks really cool i really do like that so some people might prefer to display him that way i'm gonna i'm just gonna display him keep displaying him with the with the car parts on there just because you know that's that's where they go and i just don't want to have these two pieces just like sitting behind him or anything but that is an option it's your toy you can display it how you wish so that's a really cool that it's a an intentional feature but it is a feature nonetheless that's kind of on there now now we got to look at the back of the box to figure out which one goes where <laughs> so and then as you can see that just goes right back in Maybe if I am putting this in the, uh-huh, yeah. So it just, they just fit right back in. And there we are. All right. Yeah, so that's.
pretty much it for crankcase here. I really like him. Uh, I think he's a, I think he's a pretty good toy, and it's uh, it's. I I do kind of wish he came with a gun as well, besides his uh, little spear things here. But other uh, overall, I think he's really cool, and I really like him. So if you want to pick this guy up, I recommend going to Walmart, where he is five dollars off. Uh, anywhere else you'll find him. So he'll be only, he'll be fifteen dollars instead of twenty. That's much better than anywhere else. Uh, if you want more of my opinions on the whole pricing thing, uh, go back to my barricade review because I kind of talk about why I think they're twenty dollars instead of being ten dollars now. Uh, but other than that, that is it for this video. So thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. Remember to follow me on Twitter. That link is in the description below. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you for watching and goodbye.